Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome to a brand new series on the channel featuring Empire of Sin, which was just released today, moments ago actually. And we're jumping into the game for the very first time. And you can see here we're set on a rainy night in Chicago in the 1920s, in the height of Prohibition, which is the ban of sales and consumption of alcohol in the United States. And what we're gonna do here is just hop into a new game. I have no experience with this game whatsoever, but I have seen some of the development updates and blogs and videos, so I have some idea of how the game is played. And for those of you who have no clue what the game is like, it's basically a mix of Paradox's grand strategy game and Exom's turn-based combat as you play one of the mob bosses in the 1920s Chicago to take control of Chicago. And you can think of this sort of a mix of board game and action turn-based XCOM playstyle where you play as a bunch of mobs with different weapons and abilities to use. And the first thing we're going to do is pick a mob boss to take control of. And there are a variety of choices with different backgrounds. And most of the mob bosses in the game are historical. Now, not all of them were historically active in Chicago in 1920, but they were all mob bosses or inspired by some mob bosses around this period throughout the US or sometimes uh, South America or Mexico. And you can see their background. So this lady here would be from Mexico and she has certain abilities, certain bonuses for building up the empire portion of the game, whether that's brothels, casinos, or making bootleg liquor and some sort of diplomatic bonus. We are going to play hey. as Alpha. I'll find hey. him. Oh, by the way. I'm your man. Al Capone. Me Scarface. Uh, hey, I'm your Moving along. Hey, we'll doing? find our guy. And for those of you decision. There we go. So we have Saiwin Mok here and he belongs to a faction called the Hip Sing Tong. So these characters are spelled using a different type of romanticization of Chinese characters and they are mainly used for Cantonese. I speak Mandarin personally, so I'm probably going to butcher some of the Cantonese pronunciations. However, I do know that uh, Sai Wing Mok here uh, also go by Mok Duck as his name and his Mandarin pronunciation of his name would be Mai De. And he belonged to Hip Sing Tong, which is Xie Sheng Tang, which is this organization. You can think of it between a union and some sort of club or affiliation. And it basically helped immigrants to deal with daily lives, but also transform themselves into these pseudo political criminal organizations around the turn of the century. And he was not active in Chicago historically. He was active in New York City, as many of the Chinatown areas in New York City had different affiliations with different Tong or Tang, and each Tang had basically a different group and they controlled their own rackets, whether that's casinos, brothels, and opium dens. But they also supported regular businesses. So the evolution of these Tang uh, basically started out as immigrants coming to the US and they were helping them get settled, whether that's political help with immigration or everyday life help as in finding a job. And many of these organizations basically had some funding and when a new immigrant arrives, they will help them get settled in these boarding houses. And the original founder of the first Tong in New York City, which is used to be called Lian Yi Tong, I believe, what they did was they had a boarding house in his own home. He was able to have like 24 people sleep there at one time. And the whole idea of what they did was they would fund a business for you. And the business of choice at the time was laundromats because it was cheap to set up. It was hard work, but most of the white Americans didn't want to do it. So it was left for the immigrants and the immigrants didn't really mind. And you needed to spend about $75, this is 1880 money, to open up a laundromat. And in about a week, your return would be anywhere from $10 to $14. So getting your money back is pretty quick. It's hard work, but there's really no competition to set these things up. And by the late 1880s, 
in New York City at least, there was about 300 Chinese ran laundromats. And that's a huge number considering the Chinese immigration like population in New York around time was probably only around 9,000 people or so. So that's the legitimate business side of these tong. But on the other side, they ran opium dens, they ran brothels, they ran casinos. And there's reasons to all those things, and we'll talk about them throughout this uh, Let's Play. So let's hop into game. Uh, first, let's take a look at his abilities. He has a boss ability, that's his personal skill. Death Blossom, introduce your enemies to deadly blooms. Select multiple locations and throw a bomb at each one. Each bomb explodes into a cloud of smoke, poisoning all nearby characters. Okay, so we throw a couple bombs out. Our empire bonus is our brothels will start out with one extra guard. Our casino game cost is 20% cheaper. And diplomatic bonus, enemy of my enemy. Enemy trades and truth do not reduce faction rating with faction in business agreement. Hmm. Enemy trades and truth do not reduce faction rating from with factions in business agreement. Interesting. I don't know how that works out in game, but we'll see. And there should be a tutorial because I have not played this. So let's see how we do here. And we get to set up the game. So think of this as the board game setup. You can pick how many neighborhoods of Chicago you want to play with, right? So the bigger the map, the more factions you have to deal with. And I don't know why these are moving in sync of each other. And you can pick how crowded the map is. It feels like as I'm lowering the number of neighborhoods to play with, the enemy faction was increasing. And there's a difficulty scale. Boss, underboss, lieutenant, what is this, maid, associate. Well, I typically like to play on the hardest difficulty, but since this is a fresh take, I think we'll start with lieutenant and see where things take us. We'll also start with, you know, probably let's do five neighborhood and eight enemy factions. Actually, I don't know if more factions is a good thing or not because splitting the land, if we don't expand aggressively, let's do eight and let's do five neighborhoods just to try things out. We're meeting with his brother. Kun Lin, whose shop has been destroyed by a mysterious rival gang. Sai, I don't know how much longer I can take this. Slow down and tell me what happened. Those bastards went too far this time. They destroyed our shop. Who did? They were the same guys that have been giving us trouble since we got here. I'm sure of it. I mean, they usually just drive by and shout at us, that sort of thing. But then today, Sai, my whole life was in that shop. What are we gonna do? Do you have any more information about them? How can I find them? What do you want from me? You said things will be different here. You said we wouldn't have enemies anymore, and I wouldn't be lumped in with your damn gang. I just want a normal life, Sai. I'm not a fighter like you. Grow up. You're the one that chose to come with me. You could have stayed back in New York. And get shot through my shop window every other day? No thanks. Besides, I wouldn't last three minutes in New York. You know that. Did you at least see who attacked you? Their faces? No, sorry. All that shrapnel must have obscured my vision. Getting blown up will do that. Don't be like that. Can't you tell me anything else about them? Well, one of them did flick this poker chip at me as the shop burned down. And he smiled, airily. Anyway, maybe that'll help you find them. Okay, well, at least it's something. Sai, 
Do you know who the scientific killer is? Who? He's a criminal mastermind from the West Coast. He completely dismantled the gang in San Francisco in 09. I think someone like that could help us. <laughs> what? And I can't? It's not like that. I just know he could help us. And he's in Chicago. I don't know what for. Last I heard, he's in the casino. The least you could do is talk to him. How do you know he's in the city? You're not the only one with connections. I heard from a friend that he's been in the city for a little while now. Hold up in that casino. He must be planning something big. It's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, real exciting. Okay, I'll talk to him for you. Good, thanks. I'm going back to the shop to see if I can salvage anything. Come find me after you've talked to Sing Doc. Be careful. Mom would chop off my head if anything happened to you. Thanks, sire. I'll feel a lot better when these guys are dead and buried. Dead and buried? is a Psywing Mark speciality. Alrighty, so that's our beginning story narrative. We are helping our brother. We have moved from New York City. I think that's a good premise because we were from New York City. I mean, technically, Psywing Mark was born in San Francisco and he came to New York when he was 16 and got started there. And there was definitely gang wars or they were called the Tone Wars between different tones inside Chinatown. And we won that historically, but I guess now we're being chased to um, Chicago. And we have our tutorial, which I definitely need. Welcome to Chicago. Let's have a look around. Okay. And we can rotate. Cool, cool. Come on, I rotated. Oh, we gotta zoom in and zoom out. And right click to move. Chicago is a dangerous place, and in order to survive, you're gonna need to learn how to fight. Fortunately, I know right where you can find one. So we can't. This is symbol telling me who owns the building. This is a Moonlight Tavern, it's a speakeasy in the Meat Packers district. And let's see. We right Agreed. click on the building to enter. This joint belongs to Ronnie O'Neill. He calls himself the boss of the Meat Packers gang. His thugs aren't going to know what hit them. Oh, so if we hit control, we enter combat. The combat map is the same as the game map. It just changes phases and we hit, you know, or I guess control here, we enter actual combat. Let's see. And then you can see In the grid Empire pattern. Sin, combat is turn-based. The queue of characters waiting to take their turn is above, and the turn order is decided by a character's initiative step. If enemies are allied with a boss, that boss is also shown under their portrait. Okay. So here we are, 150 health, with some abilities to use, some enemies to take care of. These are just meat packer guard. I don't think this guy is fighting and they belong to this boss. They have a lot less health than us. He has a gun. Oh, they all have a gun. We also have a gun. So I guess this is the moving phase. We have our single action revolver here. And there's the cover system. So I'm gonna try to kill him first. We don't do enough damage to kill him, so maybe we run behind cover first. Good. And that's our action, I guess, and we still have one action left. Okay. Overwatch means when it's their turn, they move, we shoot. Well, I'm just gonna fire. The action bar is below. In combat, you can move or choose an action from the action bar. Some actions require a target. It's your turn, so fire a shot if you've got a target. Choose another action or move into cover. Alright, sounds great. So, he looks like a good place to uh, put this bullet. 
83% to hit, 41% to crit. If we don't want to fire at him... Oh, actually we can see more stats. We can't see the guy over there, so this would be it. So you can see where the stats come from. Let's just fire. We got a crit, but only 29. Each character has two action points, or AP. Generally, each action takes one AP. Extended moves, special weapons, and... Yeah, we got it. So they didn't do anything except for move into cover, and this cover is terrible. Um, we have four shots left. Bunker down, increase defense by 10. Delay turn. Well, let's just finish him off. And we could just overwatch. We can tell them where to shoot if they approach us. If he comes for this side, we'll do that. Nope, he's going right there. Using cover is vital to your survival. Cover is or half cover, represented by a half shield. You can be flanked by the enemy and lose all of the cover. Yeah, got it, got it. Um these are all half covers. That will take us two movement, I'm guessing. Is the white zone should be one. We can just fire at him. It's a little bit lower chance, but he can't really hit us either. I want to use the bomb, just to try it. Jesus. Wait, can't do it? Not letting me, why? Ah, the arc is the angle. Well, what are we gonna do? Let's cancel this. Let's move to half cover. Good. We have two shots left, which should be enough to kill him if we hit him. Percentage is not great. We can't finish him with a bomb next time. Kill. Ah, bomb time. We're gonna throw three. Wow, poor guy. Wow, okay. Just as I Nothing to report. We picked up a health tunic. That's pretty good value. 745? Restore 30 health each round for the next three rounds. Oh, that's a lot of healing. So there's a standing with the meat packers, and we get money from this as well. And that's our entire fund. Let's take the loot. When you win a racket, you have several options. Let's take this place over and make it ours. Okay, so we can take over, we can ransack it, 25 days, raid the building, steal everything that's now nailed down, you walk with money, weapon, you name it, but the building will be closed for 25 days. Smash it up, destroy the building, 240 and 360 days of being closed. I don't even think we get money here. Raise, we need a demolitionist. We blow the building up, and it's gone from the game. Okay, but well, we'll take our very first racket let's here. Make this a speakeasy. Taking a place over costs less than buying it outright. Wow. And it's free to keep the racket type the same. It's quite pricey, and we thought 745 was a lot of money. So we can keep it a speakeasy, but it's the only thing we can do. Earning $2 signs, upkeep $1 sign, can provide high earning when supplied with alcohol. Gangster may become alcoholic if left alone too long in the speakeasies. Speakeasies require alcohol. Yeah, so we need supply. We need supply with a brewery, basically. Oh, we're gonna name it. Haha. <laughs> Speakeasy. Uh. The office. I'm down for this. It's like, where are you going, honey? The office. Now this racket's yours, and that's how it's done. You want something? Take it. 
You're gonna need some guards to keep your speakeasy safe, so open up the racket screen. You got four different ways you can class up the joint, starting with security. The information panel to the right shows your security's current state and what you'll get in the next upgrade. Select upgrade to go to the next level. Okay, so it's forcing us to upgrade security. Current upgrade, one upkeep, 25 security points. That's the minimum, three guards, one external, two internal. Move up, one more upkeep, and we get five guards. How much are we even making here? Recent violence. So draw is how many customers are coming in, right? There's a base value draw, word of mouth, recent violence, off average, and then how much each customer will spend. And then there's the upkeep. We're losing money here, right? Weekly income. Anyways, we'll do what they say. You can rush 25 the days. By selecting the rush button. Go ahead and do that now. Guess this one will be free? No, but we got free money. Because we just had like 200. Since you got a stage, you get yourself a band. Upgrading ambience improves your draw. Higher draw means more customers and more money. Select upgrade to add a band. Okay, alright. We get a band. Go ahead and rush the band too. I'm sure they're used to it. Select rush. Alright. That's what I'm talking Here's about. Here's our band. Great. Now, Here are guards. You got other work to do. Good. The gunfire attracted some of the local criminal talent, and they're looking for work. As your empire grows, you'll gain access to bigger and better hired guns, too. Okay, so we're in Little Italy, which makes sense. The New York City Little Italy is right next to Chinatown. And we have this as our location now, and we can hire some of these uh, new thugs or hired guns. Maria Rodriguez, her take is 2%, zero minimum. She's an immigrant, gang leader, fled to America, shoot first, hair trigger, angry. Those are probably traits, right? Yeah, traits. Relationship, has some enemies, has a lover, has a couple friends. Hugh Miller, 2% as well. Poverty, religious, boxer, birds of a feather flock together. Brave, immovable, two enemies, two friends. Nervous reflection. All right, let's just, uh, either one. Why don't we take... The one with 84 health. Oh, we can take a look. So he uses a shotgun. Okay. More overwatch angle, knockback, oh, lots of stats here. Regular rounds, 38 revolver pistol, some rounds. He has a first aid kit. Okay, and his traits, poverty, defense bonus, morale gain, persuasion, leadership. He's a boxer. You can pick up enforcer professional talents, 10% melee. Neighborhood speak easy income when equipped to a safe house, 10%. Cool. When within 10 meters of a friendly character that shares the same profession, cooldown of all ability reduced by one. Okay. Brave. Immovable. Cool. He looks pretty neat. He can taunt, he can suppress, so there's skills you can learn. And then you can kind of look at his bio. Served in the Great War, World War I, as part of the Harlem Hellfighters in France. Despite receiving numerous requests from various French ladies to remain in France after the war, he followed his heart instead. He moved to Chicago to pursue a relationship with a woman who unfortunately did not return his affections. Though Hugh was devastated by the cancelled affair, the women of Chicago certainly were not. Well, quite the ladies, man. So life lesson is working with others. Guess it makes sense from a soldier's background. And faith in boxing got Hugh through a life of poverty, and he emerged from his trials braver than most. Now he's an impenetrable stone wall of a man. He's enforcer. I mean, sounds great. Let's hire him. 
And we confirm. Well, Notice the money comes in. Hey, their price for working with you. The take is based on a percentage of your total earnings. In general, the better they are, the higher the take. I mean, that's his relationship, and they're showing us Maria. Gangsters range from professional hitmen and to Hugh. shockingly wayward criminals. They have opinions about the people they work with, and their personalities and traits develop over time. You'll find gangsters looking for work out in the world and in the Black Book. We'll take a look at that later. As you become more powerful, you'll gain access to more hardened, skilled gangsters. Now, hire your second crew member. Oh, we're taking Marie anyways. So, he's not friends with Bruno, with Gibby, but he's friendly with Claude and Frederick. Cool. Uh, do I just exit this one? Talk to Maria. Let's just take a quick look at her. So she uses a submachine gun. Nice. And then also a 38. Also has a heal kit. And she's an immigrant. Gang leader. Led to America. So she's a hired gun. Lower health, but more marksmanship. Okay. Shoots first. Starts in Overwatch. 100% chance to activate hair trigger whenever someone's HP or ally HP drop below 25%. There's a chance they will lash out and attack at a random target. Ah. Okay, so she will fire whenever allies HP or her own HP drop below 25. 10% chance to relapse into alcoholism. Minus 10 marksman. While alcoholic or drunkard, 10% chance to take a drink. 24 melee. 25% to activate hair trigger. We already have 100%. It's going to be 125% and then lose defensive bonus. Feels like she's going to die. A very sad drunken life. Uh, but she has a lover here. She likes Bruno. But then our other guy hates Bruno. That's going to be interesting. Well, they don't have any mutual friends, but let's hire her as well. Gracias. Wait, she's... Oh yeah, right. She's Spanish. No. Yes. Yes, she is. Rodriguez. What's her background? Ran a lawless bar in the wild west town of Shane, Wyoming for most of her life. She kept the peace by keeping literal pieces of so-called troublemakers in jars behind the bar. If that didn't work, then her trusty saw off would be the last word in any disagreement. Hey, we didn't get that shotgun. Her shotgun ability became a theme of reverence for the lost cowboy rolling through the west. Maria won't mince words, and she certainly won't hesitate to put someone in their place when she deemed they deserved it. Life lessons shoot first. Background. Maria had fled to America at a young age, but quickly fell in with a local game, rose through the ranks. She developed a policy of shoot now, ask questions later. Okay. Alright. We got our two characters. What now? To create a squad, left click to draw a selection area of the desired characters. Now you got yourself a squad, just in time too. Your new speakeasy isn't gonna last long without alcohol. It's the resource that makes your world go round. Just so happens Ronnie O'Neill's got a brewery close by. Let's take it over. Zoom out to the world map to see where it is. Okay, or we can use X. So, zooming out. So you can see, it's a very board game looking type of map. And these are districts. We picked five of them. They can have up to 10. We're starting out in Little Italy, and this is Chicago, of course. And we have also East Pilsen Loop near North Side and near South Side in the game. We are going to stay in our zone, I believe. Um, and we're just looking for the brewery right here. Fishmonger's Yard. And all we have to do is kind of right click right here. Good. And they would be moving. Hey, boss in the second position. Not bad. And then we're going to head ourselves over here. Gotta bite him up. Oh, and there's a couple guards, external guards. And we're going to gonna light them up. So, she shoots first. <laughs> the meat pack is okay. we're expecting you. 
Hopefully they've also expected their funerals. Let's take them out. Okay, so we could throw bombs, but I guess why not? We can just blow him up and then like we won't use bombs on him. Show them what the boss is made of. He's expected to die from this. Can I just hit him and not our man Hugh? I think so. And let's just double up this bomb. Come then. Oh, oh, shit. They got me. And that's game. Just as I expected. And let's see, we got an achievement for that. Cool. Uh, it's You're no gonna loot. need more than a few guns to take out Ronnie and his guards. Luckily, the black market's got everything you need. Open the black market by selecting the shop icon at the top of the screen. Now that you're in the shop window, it's time to get yourself some provisions. Check the stats and effects of any item in the shop in the right window pane. If you want a recommendation, you can't go wrong with a first aid kit. Leave the shop when you have what you need. All right, so new stocks in 90 days. Right now we have a rare shotgun for 5,000 that we can't afford. We have a couple of uncommon guns that we can't afford either. No pistols for sale. We can... Wow. This is a fraud. You cannot be selling us a razor blade for $7,500. Anyhow, can't afford any of these. Uh, we can... These are probably just accessory items. We can buy a nerve tonic. First aid kit for 200 We still have first aid kit on everyone, I believe. Gun maintenance, increased chance to crit, driving gloves, fancy that. Sure shot rounds, plus 10 marksmen with these 9mm, anyhow, yeah, we're not buying anything, we're cheap like that. Now take over Ronnie's brewery to let him know who's boss. Right. You need to move in the car. Breweries are well guarded, and this is a tough fight. Okay, we're going first again. There's one, two, three. That's it, right? Two external, three internal. Let's introduce you to a little bit of pyrotechnic and poison damage on top of that. <laughs> and then. This guy's exposed. This guy's kind of exposed, right? We have two actions. Well, his main gun's what? Shotgun? He can also do a shotgun blast and a cone. We can always swap to our trusty pistol. Pistol might be better here. Seventy percent. Hold on. Yeah. It's more accurate. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna swap. Pop him. Wait, wait. There we go. He's down. We can only fire once. Hmm. Half cover? There's like no cover here. Let's roll! Alright, we'll go there. I don't know how much the poison damage does. We have a... We have a burst fire because we have a small machine gun. But we also have a pistol. I want to kill him. Understood. Oh, I think I used up both action. I went too far. Well... Ouch. Uh, call he died of poison. Dark. That's good. Uh, Boss man. Let's go. And we will finish it. Uh, uh, Just as I expected. We got ourselves a grenade. 2,000 value. Yeah, I'll take that base value. It's actually quite expensive. 
I got a little bit of money. Take this racket over too. Take this it's over. It's free to set up a racket of the same type you took over. It'll cost you to re-outfit a racket as something else. Select brewery. Let's see. The other one's called the office, right? So can we have a supply room? I'll just title it. Mr. Mock, never thought I'd have to say this to you, but stop stealing my fucking rackets. Look, I'm a busy man, so I'm gonna make this quick. You and I need to have a talk. You know where I am. Don't keep me waiting. I'll be there, O'Neill. Or a sit down. Could be a gunfight. Step outside the brewery. We will, but um, I think we're actually gonna end our episode here. It is gonna be a little short, but tutorial will probably go on for a little bit longer. We're gonna be continuing this next time as we'll meet with Mr. O'Nelly and see what he has to say about all these rackets. Oh, the blood's getting cleaned up. Wonderful. So, yeah, hopefully, you guys enjoy this one, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye!